Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action, and today we're back once again with another 2v2. Myself and Rami Landau are going to be continuing to make our way through the tournament here. Uh, this time in the finals, we've once again gone for the Coast and the uh, Tomb Kings. So yeah, this time we've got Ark in the Black, or sorry, uh, Count Noctilus with Ark in the Black instead of uh, Silostra. So, we're going to be up against Bretonia and Norska. Let's go ahead and take a look at the builds. Of course, Nocti Boy up on his Necrofex. We've got the Black Spot, as well as plenty of zombies mixed with uh, mixed pole arms and dual hand weapons. We've also got some Skeleton Warriors up front, two Tomb Scorpions for some heavy AP and terror. We've also got, of course, Arcan on his Chariot and a sole unit of Skeleton Horseman Archers. For our opponents, they've got lots of infantry, <clears throat> lots and lots of infantry Marauders, Men-at-Arms, we've got uh, Famir Warriors here as well, a Damsel Lore of Heavens, interesting choice, uh, some Peasant Bowmen, we've also got, uh, looks like more Famir Warriors, Shaman Sorcerer Lore of Fire, and Throg, going to be leading the way for Norska with Lewin up in the air. Fireball comes in, does a little bit of damage, but Noctilus is going to, I'm going to use one of his summons here at long range to bog down these Men-at-Arms, these Famir, and these, uh, these Marauders here as well. And then drop some mortars on the nice big blob that forms. So uh, definitely uh, credit Romulan Dog with that that suggestion there. He's also running forward with uh, Ark in the Black here, doing some good disruption. And the Tomb Scorpion's also going to come out of the woods here and just quickly terrify away this unit of Marauders. Meanwhile, on the main line, you can see the engagement's about to get underway here. Men at Arms charging bravely into Skeleton Warriors. They'll do all right. Um, but their leadership probably won't hold up super well. The uh, Battle Pilgrims, though, these Regiment of Renown Battle Pilgrims, the Holy Wardens of La Maison Tal, will do uh, quite well here against most of the lower tier infantry, especially with the Femir supporting them. This is going to be a very heavy central pocket. You can see uh, Noctilus kind of getting gunned down a little bit by Lewin, but uh, Tomb Scorpion's over here to protect. We've also got the Black Spot firing in, and these uh, Pistol Mobs that I had summoned up as well. Unfortunately, a lot of the Norskin forces are starting to punch through into the second line. Thankfully, we've got plenty of layers to protect. Burning Head going down there, and of course, I missed it in this cast, but if you want to see it in the original, uh, Turin did a good job of highlighting it. Uh, these Skeleton Horseman Archers managed to come around the back line and uh, just shut down these Peasant Archers, keep them from firing, do some leadership damage. Uh, peasant Archers obviously have terrible leadership, and the fact that Skeleton Horseman Archers do cause fear. Obviously, being an undead unit, um, they will easily route off those peasant bowmen. You can see, even with the support of Throg and potentially Lewin and everything, those peasant bowmen still most likely going to get routed off there. So, uh, that has been able to protect a lot of my squishier and more high value zombie units in the back line, like this Black Spot, for example, which uh, pretty much their only weakness is to enemy missile fire. Um, they're very decent in melee against large units. I guess probably against uh, better infantry as well. They wouldn't be the best, but uh, that anti-large AP plus the AP missiles being very key here, helping to do some good damage to these uh, Premier and more. You can see a uh, Noctilus firing away. We're making sure to try and keep the mortar focused on those archers as much as possible as well, just because uh, obviously the uh, mortar will do quite a bit of damage here, and if we can keep these peasants routing, like one or two hits from the mortar will reroute them, and then they'll kind of uh, continue to flee, so yeah. You can see the black spot opening up on uh, Lewin here, as well as the Spirit Leech. A very nice wind blast from our opponents just rips through them. Does quite a bit of damage, but uh, me, we are going to be able to heal that. Obviously, Count Noctilus does have inv Invocation of the Heck, which I've been dropping to support various pockets here. Uh, this Tomb Scorpion, uh, I told Romulan, hey, let's move this guy back. I'm going to get a big heal on Noctilus, on the black spot, and all these other kind of high value units in this pocket here. So. Uh, since this Tomb Scorpion's getting a little low, I suggested he move him back there, so we're going to go ahead and drop a heal in just a moment. You can see the Shaman Sorcerer Lore of Fire still pretty healthy. The Damsel has taken a bit of damage here, but uh, we are going to focus the Black Spot, I believe, on her in just a moment as well. And, uh, yep, you can see we're kind of forming up from the heal. That does go off, and it does heal Constructs. Um, I'm assuming just because they have the crumbling mechanic, but, uh, yeah... You can see all of a sudden the damsel is going to be in a bit of distress as this huge line of zombie guns opens up on her. And I say huge line, it's just one huge unit really, plus Noctilus. But uh, you can see the Marauders, although they did a lot of damage initially, especially the infantry, they're just going to run out of steam. Uh, I think that taking Lore of Life definitely would have been better than Lore of Heavens, particularly with these Vermeer. They're taking a lot of AP missile fire from the Black Spot, and nothing has really been able to get back there and compromise them super well. 
The Wind Blasts have done some pretty good damage so far, but uh, Black Spot just tearing through these from here, and uh, also going to be a huge danger to Throg as well. Uh, looks like a Burning Head goes down. I'm able to dodge it a little bit there. <clears throat> Not completely, but... The Holy Wardens have cut through quite a few units, up to 192 kills, uh, just ripping through our trap units. You can see most of our infantry is offline at this point, but we do still have summons, of course, and that's the main reason why we brought this build is in this format. We figured that summons and healing both would be very strong, and uh, this particular build offers us both. Now, that being said, some of you were saying in the comments of the previous uh, video I showed off of this, uh, this combo, the Coast plus the Tomb Kings, that, uh, you know, summons and healing might be OP in this format. I will say uh, Wicked and Halo did manage to do very well in their series uh, with the number of builds that didn't have either. Uh, they managed to win quite a few games there, so I don't think it's necessarily required, but I do think that those mechanics are going to be pretty strong in a format like this. And uh, certainly with two factions that can bring heavy, uh, heavy summons and also support each other, uh, you know, the Invocation of the Heck being able to heal the Tomb King's units is very, very key and means that Tomb Kings plus either Vampire faction, really. Uh, but I find the Vampire Coast synergizes just a little bit better. I mean, you don't get the heavy cavalry. The, the Blood Knights, having Blood Knights with Tomb Kings is just amazing. But at the same time, uh, you know, you get extra guns, and you can put together some really just nasty missile builds. You can put together uh, just very well-balanced kind of control builds. Uh, you know, uh, Tomb Kings can bring Lord of Light for nets, and you can net something down and then just gun it down with mass zombies. I mean, there's, there's a lot of synergy between these two particular factions, I think. Maybe a little bit more so than with the, uh, the Vampire Counts, but... That brings up the question, though. Are Undead Factions OP in general? Uh, this is something I kind of wanted to s discuss with this video. You can see as the balance of power is starting to tilt, it's pretty going to be pretty obvious who's going to win. Frog's going to make his last stand here, so we'll kind of watch some cinematics as we go into this discussion. But uh, are the undead factions just OP in general? I think that they might be, honestly. Um, for those of you who watch my tier list, you'll know that all the death factions did very well. Uh, Tomb Kings, I think, might be the weakest of the three, but at the same time, they still do... in incredibly well in tournament play, in the hands of a skilled player, they are absolutely brutal. Uh, Tomb Scorpions, you know, they're very, very strong, but just in general, all three of the death factions, you know, Tomb Kings, Vampire Coast, and Vampire Counts, are all very, very strong. So, uh, why, why is that? Well, there are a few reasons. Uh, number one, obviously, is crumbling. And crumbling versus routing is a big, big issue right now, I think. Um, it's probably the biggest issue and the biggest reason why the Undead Factions are so much stronger. Um, you can see this unit of zombies, for example, is crumbling. They're continuing to fight, however, uh, despite the fact that their leadership is broken. You can see, though, um, yeah, they're kind of a little bit late to show that off, but uh, standard units will rout, which means they run away while their leadership is broken, meaning they do not fight while their leadership is broken, unlike the undead units. Now, that being said, sometimes running away can be a little bit advantageous. If you have a mobility advantage or just a faster unit, your opponent maybe doesn't have the numbers to chase you down. Uh, being able to run away sometimes can let you, you know, disengage a unit, reform it into another pocket, but in general, you're probably going to get chased down. You'll lose guys when they start to route anyway on the initial, you know, on the initial route while they're still in melee or something. Um, whereas while your unit's crumbling, they're still fighting, they're still doing damage, and especially missile units, um, like for the Vampire Coast and for the Tomb Kings, they can still generate a huge amount of value while they're crumbling. Um, like the zombie zombie handguns, for example, like these guys. The Black Spot, obviously, a little bit of a, an exception there. A Regiment of Renowns, they have better leadership, and just overall, they're not as prone to crumbling as the regular zombie guns. But uh, just the regular zombie handguns, for example, if you get them to crumbling, which is not super hard to do, they're still going to continue shooting, and they have such a high volume of fire that they're going to do an obscene amount of damage before they go down, right? And the crumbling damage it doesn't damage them fast enough to really... Uh, you know, make it balanced to routing, I would say. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, you're, you're going to be able to generate so much value because the rate of crumbling just isn't that high at the end of the day. I think if they were to slightly, slightly increase the damage of crumbling, even like literally like 2 to 3 HP per tick would probably make a pretty good difference and bring the uh, undead factions a little bit more in line with the rest. Uh, I know there has been some discussion about nerfing 
uh, Lore of Vampires as well. I do think that Lore of Vampires is by far and away the most powerful lore of magic in the game, bar none. I mean, just without a doubt. But uh, if we go ahead and have a look here, uh, well played to our opponents, by the way, and Romulan Dog as well. I know this is kind of uh, taking a turn a little bit, this particular video, but this is something I've been meaning to discuss anyway, and this will kind of give us a good uh, good forum to do so. Um, so Lore of Vampires, uh, I don't know, uh, I got the right one, yep. So it's just, it's just overpowered, I would say, definitely. But th that should be balanced out by the fact that Vampire Units, va both Vampire Coast and Vampire Counts, just are kind of crap. Um, but that's not really how it works in practice. Uh, certainly with the Vampire Counts, if we were to take a look at, say, Skeleton Warriors, for example, and we compare them to a comparable, comparable unit, like uh, Bretonian Men at Arms, for example. We won't compare them to state troops just because we know from previous videos that state troops are very cost effective. But uh, yeah, let's just compare them to Men at Arms, for example. Um, Men at Arms have just straight up better stats, significantly better stats um, in terms of their attack and defense. So theoretically, that should balance things out. However, the leadership is uh, what, about the same? Uh, the leadership for the Skeleton Warriors is technically lower, but of course, since they don't route, and the Men-at-Arms will actually route quite easily, uh, the Skeleton Warriors will continue to stand and fight while the uh, Men-at-Arms have routed, meaning that despite the fact they have worse stats, um, of course, they're a little bit cheaper as well. Um, but, the, again, they'll continue to stand and fight while the Men-at-Arms have already routed, and that's the biggest, the biggest thing that makes uh, Vampire Counts, Tomb Kings, and Vampire Coast I think just a little bit overpowered. Vampire Counts certainly have some other issues that I'll be addressing in uh, future videos as well. They're their own special brand of overpowered, I would say, but uh, Vampire Coast and Tomb Kings are not too far off. I think that uh, some, of the, some of the changes that have been proposed in the Fast Tag update for the Vampire Coast are definitely going to help, you know, a little bit of nerfs to deck droppers and some other units, um, but in general I think that just a slight increase to crumbling across the board for all three death factions would bring them a little bit more in line with the rest of the game. I think you would see less, uh, you know, death spam in tournaments and so on. Not that you'd see a ton, and certainly I'm a big fan of the factions thematically, and I don't want them to be just nerfed into the ground, but just the way, from my experience from watching casting and playing a ton of battles, I do think that the death factions are just a little bit overtuned right now, and the biggest reason why, again, is that crumbling versus routing mechanic. And so if you, we, you can find a way to balance that out a little bit better, in my mind, you'd be, that would be to increase the damage of crumbling. But again, I'm curious to hear your guys' suggestions in the comments down below. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, how would you go about balancing the undead factions? Um, oh, another suggestion that has been brought up that I, I'll advocate uh, for strongly is that all summons should have leadership. Uh, right now, it's very inconsistent. Some summons have leadership, some summons are unbreakable. All summons should have leadership, so that, for example, if you summon up a unit of zombies in the middle of ten units of marauders, like I did in that battle, or, you know, I was not, I'm exaggerating a little bit, obviously, it was like, what, one marauder, a Femir, and a man at arms, something like that. Anyway, you do that, and they're immediately completely surrounded. They should start crumbling. If you summon up a unit of Skaven slaves in the same situation, you know, they have leadership, they're going to run away. So uh, they should, the zombies should start crumbling, right? We gotta have this logic be applied consistently across the game. So I think those two changes could potentially help. Uh, I'd be curious to know what other thoughts you guys have in the comments down below, so uh, fire away. Uh, Thanks very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.